everyone, and welcome to Digital Beats, where we focus on how technology is enabling digital transformation. I'm John Panker, Tech Target's Managing Director for Asia Pacific. Great to have you joining us today. Our focus is the media industry, specifically how media organizations are using technology to add value to their businesses. We've got a great panel. Let me introduce you to them. We're going to start out with Min Song Ang. He is the CEO of MediaShock. They're a leading video production house in Southeast Asia. They've done work for companies like Dell, Heineken, and McKinsey. Min Song, great to have you with us. Yeah, thank you for inviting. Yeah. Fantastic. And also here from Alibaba Cloud is Khan Yang. He leads Alibaba Cloud's big data and AI business strategy and solutions practice for Asia Pacific. Khan, great to see you. Hi, very, very nice to meet you. Glad to be here. Fantastic. Let's get going. And I want to start out by asking Min Song, you're a veteran of the media industry. I am as well. And I have seen how technology has really transformed our marketplace. And I'm wondering what you see as the biggest challenges in keeping up with the technological developments that are impacting media today. Right. Um, that's, that's a great question. You, you can't keep up, can you? Things are moving so fast. The last one year or last two years, how many things have changed compared to the last 10 years? Um, I think we, we can't keep up. Um, but I think it's about having the, the right people uh, who learns and who unlearns and who relearns. And it's, it's all about people. I think technology must be uh, something that serves people and not the other way around. And uh, the biggest transformation or biggest change and struggle I, I face, uh, I think in the media industry, is how there seems to be so many different tools, but they don't all come together. And they're just many small parts. And when we want to design something that works out of the box, it just so, seems so, so difficult. Yep. So putting people first is really your number one piece of advice. Kind of, what would you, how would you, how would you add to that? You're working with a lot of different companies. What do you see as their challenges in terms of adding value through investments in technology? Right. Uh, actually, I totally agree with uh, Ming Song said. Um, so you cannot really keep up because there's really a lot of changes happening. So, um, but so that translates to the learning curve. It's the cost of adopting these technologies. Um, so uh, one of the key role that uh, cloud or I am trying to serve to the market is that to make the technology simple, as simple as possible, so that people don't have to spend that much time to learn about it, to learn about how it works or learn about the theory behind it. They just need to know how it works for their business scenario. So with that in the place, then um, I hope that uh, the technology adoption could be a lot faster, which the businesses only can care about how the technology can help their business in their scenarios instead of learning how the technology works. Yeah. Min Song, do you think we've, we're, we're at a place now where you've seen some of your colleagues maybe adopt technology for technology's sake without really understanding the impact it'll have on their business value? I, I think um, we have been around for a while and it, I have certainly seen people who uh, explore technology for technology's sake. And I think that's a great thing um, because they do explore. Uh, the worst thing that you want to have is to have people in your team or to, be, to have people you work with who do not bother exploring. So uh, first thing, em em embrace technology, um, allow it to figure out what works. And subsequently, as long as they figure out what works, then it helps them uh, apply back to business. If they don't even bother exploring technology for technology's sake, they wouldn't even be uh, positioned themselves to think about the business. That's, that's my take on it. So Thank I love you. people who, who, who love technology for, for the sake of it, at least. Then, then there is some, some play um, attached to that. Yep. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about augmented and virtual reality. There was so much promise around augmented and virtual reality. And yet we haven't really seen adoption pick up the way we you know, might've expected. And I'm wondering 
why you think that's the case. I'm going to ask both of you guys to comment on this, and and Min Tong, maybe you can get us going. Right. Um, remember 3D glasses, the the blue mm -hmm. and the red thing, that was touted at that point in time to be something great and big. Um, and now it's augmented augmented reality, um, mixed reality, and and the many kinds of realities, and. My own observation is in the past one year, I've seen more of such things happening in productions and it's getting in a slightly bigger way uh, than before. And here's my observations on this. Um, in the past, and I think augmented really is a way of personalization, giving each person um, their own special unique look through the, their own pair of lenses, whether it's through their own devices, uh, whether it's on their own uh, uh, different kinds of goggles and stuff like that. But the biggest problem that it faced is it is unable to have it at scale in a comfortable manner. And fast forward the last one year when people are forced to be at home, everybody is forced to be on, on their own devices and not at a large conference where they see augmented reality uh, on the screen. And that, they just, just have a different feeling. So I thought augmented reality may take off in perhaps a different un unexpected way from how it was meant to be just because people have their own space now to experience the personalization to experience whatever the developers and the program owners wants to push out to them i'm actually bearing uh, quite bearish for what augmented reality and perhaps uh, on a personal note i work a lot with uh, engineering companies on some of their um, pro projects. And it is in high usage because of uh, how augmented with mixed reality kind of delivers that use case scenario um, in helping fulfill an actual business need. Okay. Kanyang, your take on this? Do you think in a post pandemic world, we're going to see augmented and virtual reality take off? What are the impediments to wider adoption? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, so what we have uh, uh, observing from my communication with various clients is that uh, in the past few years, the digital native company actually have adopted this a lot. For example, the gaming industry, they have been really adopted in VR for many use cases. And then during the last few years, I was talking to traditional industries, for example, the resorts, shopping malls, manufacturing companies, and then they are very interested about it. Their, their digital innovation team are trying and then trying to adopt their uh, into their pilot use cases. But the, there is a gap what we see is that uh, there needs to be some more consultants in the markets to who understand the technology, how to use the technology and also have a deep technology about the business case. For example, manufacturing is not a simple use case. There are a lot of mm -hmm. consequences. There are a lot of SOPs, ISO standards so we need to have someone in the in place to bring the gap so that the technology can be widely adopted but no doubts the value is there it's a matter about how we adopt this into some industry which has been operated for years yeah and Kanye, i'm going to give you a chance maybe to pitch you and your team's services as an area where you guys have deep expertise and have helped organizations who are looking to adopt vr yeah, that's right. So uh, actually uh, our team initially was called uh, DTC, so Digital Transformation Consultants. Uh, that is how we position our team because uh, we are handling about AI, VR, AR, big data and things like that. They come across the same problem that technology is technology, business is business, consultants is the glue to draw them together. So um, we have a team in, the, in Singapore, in China, in Hong Kong, and then we have been working with the various industries, for example, the, the buildings, building management, how do we le leverage this technology to help that? Resorts, shopping malls, those are really uh, impacted by the pandemic. And then they see digital is the must in the future. And then these are the technology they're looking at. And then we are in the role to tell them how this technology could help you and then increase your customer value, yeah. Gotcha. So we know who to call if we've got a VR project uh, in the works, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about video editing. And 
man, the, the price of these video editing suites has come down dramatically in the last few years. I'm wondering as a media outfit, as a professional video production company, Minsong, how do you stand out from the pack when there's really been this commoditization, if you will, of the video editing market? Yeah, tell me about it. Um, we, we are at the same time excited that we are able to access and reach out and, and service clients in the other part of the world. Like uh, next week, I'm working potentially working on a project with a company in the Switzerland. But at the same time, um, uh, we have to find our value. If not, the pure editing of it, um, in the past, it seems so complicated, but um, with a lot of software innovation, many mundane uh, editing can actually be done uh, automatically. And that takes away the, I, I, I think it's a good thing. It takes away the creativity. It, it takes away the mundane stuff so that the people can actually concentrate on the creative side of things. And, and that's, that's, that to me is the biggest thing that has happened, uh, automatic editing in that sense. Kanyang, you agree? Do you think the automated editing process has led to more creativity in the media space? Yeah, yeah, the answer is yes. And I would like to add in one more thing in there. So um, digital uh, video editing actually is the very good use case about cloud technology because, because cloud technology is the resource pool that you have a lot of resources there and then different parties can go and subscribe the resources. And then video editing, sometimes you need a very high computing power for that. Sometimes, you, but you don't have to always keep the computing power there because you don't edit that day and night. So that is a very good match. Then plus the AI piece. So uh, several weeks ago, I was just did a very small little project, interesting in Japan, is that uh, we're uh, shooting a video and then the, in all the video, that is the public video on the road. And then there is a small little requirements about masking the uh, car plate numbers. So then the, we just uh, leveraged AI. It's a very fast AI training. We just take some of the data and then train a simple model within just a couple of days. And then we adopted this in the whole AI video editing. And then that turns perfect. And then customer is happy. And, how, and then tell us, hey, we should do more because see, you just take a week to do that. And then it turns out right. We have, if we do this manually, then I don't know what would happen. So, yeah. yeah, fantastic use case there. So you just touched on cloud being an enabler for video editing. I'm wondering about really just media production workflow in general. And Min Song, maybe, maybe you can start out here by letting me know where you've seen technology help that workflow become more seamless, more efficient. I, I, I guess collaboration is a keyword here. Um, in the past, and especially even um, most of us would have the idea of editing suites, people coming in, uh, clients seated there on the couch. We had the, the dark room where that editing must be done physically. With the advance of technology, I'm, I'm kind of figuring out there would be a way to have this enjoyment of the editing process, but in a very, very collaborative manner. You can get the best talents um, working on a creative aspect. You can utilize the AI talent automated to mask all the car numbers. I, I know how long it will take my, 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 my team's time to do it the traditional way. So I'm looking forward to learning how it can be done in, in those manners because I, I have one project we have to mask a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I, I think it's about collaboration. Different talents coming from different parts of the world and delivering something great together. Um, mm. And because um, technology enables people to make videos far more easily, you're going to get lots more videos. So for us to stand out, I think it's a combination of good talent, um, good people who understand stories, good people who are creative to put out videos that people find interesting and engaging. Mm. I kind of believe that the human element is still pretty important, but uh, we need to leverage and supplement with technology to make our work a lot more efficient so that we, do, we don't suffer burnouts, which is happening a lot of time. Yeah, interesting. Kanyang, I, I want you to pick up on this. I mean, we just heard about how technology is enabling remote work and collaboration. And that is essential these days with so many people being forced because of the pandemic to work remotely. What are you noticing as far as this goes? And then also, 
is this really enabling us to pull talent from different parts of the world to contribute to projects that we're working on? Yeah, yeah definitely. So um, in cloud technology actually is kind of an enabler of that. So when we talk about collaborations, then we're talking about people from where, wherever they are, and then they're creating a network of people which have the video editing demand and then the talents who have thoughts about creating interesting videos and then let them exchange ideas. And then that is the network. And then cloud technology is actually a facilitator of that. But however, when we, when we say that as the perfect scenario, but in fact, the, as the cloud technology uh, company, we need to actually work with companies like Minson's business a lot more to find out all these innovative use cases. And then also to let Minson's business to know more about what kind of thing we can enable. So then we can create some synergy. And then the, furthermore, we can even create a products, technology products to make it, um, to, to make the network happen, yeah. So I wanna wrap up by giving you each a chance to comment on what excites you the most about the future of media, specifically the future of media and technology's ability to enable that future. Min Song, where do you see the market heading? I think media creation in the past was a thing for the privilege. People who have access to broadcast equipments and, and the most expensive cameras and everything else not. What excites me the most is the ability to give this um, creation privilege to the masses, um, to be able to co-create large pieces of work, um, no matter which part of the world you are on, and collaborate um, effectively. And no matter how, what, how old you are, no matter um, of language and uh, background, you can collaborate very, very easily and on very, very meaningful humanitarian work. Yeah, that, that to me is the greatest thing because the story of media is to further mankind and to tell great stories of the human, humankind. Min Song, that's great. What I'm really hearing is you talk about the democratization of content creation, which truly is exciting. Kan Yang, what about you? As you look to the future of the industry, what do you get most excited about? What are you looking forward to seeing become a reality? Right, thanks for the question. Um, so I will come from the technology point of view. So uh, we still see ourselves as a technology uh, enabler. And then the, um, we want everybody to adopt the technology without knowing how exactly that is and how exactly that works, just being able to use it. So I will give an example about how today the, the, the mobile applications, the internet works, that with the cloud technology, we build so many platforms that everybody can go there to create a mobile app and then work with others and share the interesting features about the mobile app. And then uh, I, I spent, uh, I think last year I tried it, uh, I spent 30 minutes to create the Alipay mini program and then just publish into Alipay. And then people can enjoy the features and things like that for buying things, for making payments and things like that. So um, that, that's really uh, how I see the technology enabler is happening in the internet space. But I think the, the same thing will happen in the video editing or the media industry that uh, everybody, no matter their age, no matter their background, they can all adopt this technology and then build what they, whatever they want, no matter it is in video editing or even they can train their AI model and things like that. Yeah. The future definitely seems bright for the media space. And I can't thank you both enough for sharing your thoughts. Min Song from MediaShock, Kan Yang from Alibaba Cloud. Gentlemen, thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to all of our viewers. We will see you next time on Digital Beats.